Hi there, my name is Alex Keyes, Director of Marketing here at Fluenta. Today we're going to look at the time of flight principle which we use to measure gas flow in, uh, in pipes. So here on the board I've drawn a general arrangement for how our system works. So what have we got? First of all we've got a pipe, a steel pipe. Now that could be 6 to 60, 70, 80 inches in diameter, it really doesn't matter. Either side we have our sensor arrangement. So we have a small flange, a ball valve, and then our sensors insert flush to the wall of the pipes um, on both sides. And they're arranged at about 45 degrees to the direction of flow. Now these can be inserted in different methods, hot tapping, cold tapping, spool piece. We'll look at all of those in, uh, in future videos. The other thing is here we've got labels upstream and downstream. Now those relate to the uh, direction of flow marked here by the red arrow. So the upstream sensor is close to the direction of flow, the downstream sensor is, is downstream of it. It's as simple as that. Now what these ultrasonic sensors do, they act as both a transmitter and a receiver. So this one here is sending a signal across the pipe to the other one which receives it and the downstream sensor sends an ultrasonic signal back to the upstream transducer. Pretty easy. From there on we need to apply some maths. So speed equals distance over time is one that we, uh, we probably all learnt at school and we know that we can rearrange that so that a time of flight is a speed over a distance. Now when we set these systems up we can measure the distance between these transducers really accurately. And when we talk about speed, in this we're talking about speed of sound. So the speed of sound in dry air um, under atmospheric conditions is about 330 meters a second. This pipe it could contain various different gases, hydrocarbons, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, anything. But we'll, we'll know that, so we'll be able to calculate the velocity of sound um, in that particular gas mix. So by sending these sensors here and using a really accurate computer, we can measure that time of flight, how long it takes the signals to go. The real key to this uh, technique is to know that how the signals change in flow. So as the flow coming in this direction gets faster, it really speeds up these signals moving from upstream to downstream. You can imagine it like swimming down a river, you know, with the currents taking you, it goes a little bit faster. The converse is also true. So these sensors signals coming from downstream to upstream, they're going into the direction of flow, so they are slowed. Now the faster the flow coming down the pipe, the bigger that effect. So the time of flight will begin to separate. To calculate the mean velocity in a pipe, we then apply this equation. So the upstream time minus the downstream time divided by the two multiplied together. And we put in here a little k factor, a correction factor, and that accounts for a number of different effects, including the angle of the transducers. We apply this equation and we can work out the mean velocity of gas in the pipe. Now from there on we can go to calculate things like flow, uh, mass flow, all kinds of other uh, parameters. But we'll tackle those in another video. So for today, thanks very much for watching, hope to see you next time.